Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about installing a taco in the green machine and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. I've been asked a few times over the years about installing a taco in a boat and I think they're handy to have, so it's about time I put one in the green machine. I think things like speedos, trim tilt angles, that kind of things, a bit marginal, but I reckon a taco is a really useful thing. Tells you all sorts of information. Has the motor started? Stalled, you know, obvious. You know, is the prop right for my boat? It's a really good instrument to help you find the right prop. Um, is it cavitating? Is the bushing failing in the prop? Has the hull got lots of growth and I'm losing that top end? You know, I think you get a lot of information. They're well worth putting one in. This particular one is a Sierra one that I bought off MarineEngine.com, so I'll put the link in the description. And the part number is a 58255P. In a bit of a misguided attempt to be organized, I actually took the instructions for installation home so I could read them, which I didn't do, and then promptly forgot to bring them back into the workshop. So we might wing it a bit. To try and compensate, I searched the net for a PDF and I found some instructions for a slightly different brand, but they may all actually just be rebranded anyway. Certainly seems to have the same diameter and the information I need about the outboard is obviously the same. The beer for today's video is brought to you by Dylan Bloor. Thank you, Dylan and is a Sapporo Premium. I'm also using one of these cool little spanners. It's actually just a bottle opener. The 8 mil happy hour. I should get some of these and uh, do them as little dangamarine things. Sell those. I reckon they're pretty cool. Right, where were we? The instructions for this taco say to use a 3 and 3 8 inch hole saw. I couldn't find one exactly that size. I don't know why I left 10 minutes to go shopping, but what I have here is a three and a half inch, so a little bit big, but it's still not bigger than the outer bezel, so I think it'll be okay. If it's problematic, I might just do a bead of Sikaflex or something to sort of seal it in, but we'll see how we go. I'd say a large hole saw this size is probably the main tool you might need to buy. The rest of it's very straightforward. What comes in the rest of the kit is simply a backing bracket that holds it against the dash and some nuts, that's about it. To start with, I'll show you the back of the taco. What you can see here is a few things. There's a calibration potentiometer up here and a wire for a light, a backlight. Then here you've got the send wire. This is the signal from the outboard that is actually the AC current from the charge coil that it uses to figure out your RPM. Then a ground, pretty straightforward. And then ignition here is just power from the ignition. So it gets power when the outboard's on and not when it's off. You could run it straight from the battery with the switch if you wanted. Then here is a switch where you select how many poles the charge coil has on your outboard. This is currently set to six poles, it's how it came from the factory, and as it turns out, the Honda outboard is a six pole outboard, so I don't have to change that at all. In the instructions though, you'll see if you find your brand of outboard, it'll tell you how many poles your outboard has, and then you just have to select that on that little dial with a screwdriver. The way these tacos work is that as the flywheel rotates, there's a certain number of poles on the charge coil, so it knows it's going to get six pulses per one rotation. So it just counts those pulses and knows when it gets to six, it's done one rotation. And then it translates that to the movement of the needle. Probably the other thing you need to know, which I have a vague memory I saw on the instructions that actually came with this Sierra Taco, which is the color of the wire that is that signal wire. So if you're looking to do one of these installs, the two things you really need to figure out is the color of the wire that's your signal wire, and how many poles your charge coil has. Once you get those two bits of information, you're pretty much ready to go. All right, first step for me is finding somewhere on the dash where I can physically fit there. So let's go have a look at the boat. On this side, I've actually got a compass and a fuel gauge, which I haven't wired up yet. I just put it in there and then couldn't get the center to fit in my tank, so that video went south. But I do have a little bit of space here next to the Y fish, and it is clear behind it. That's the other big thing to check. Having a bit of space on the dash is one thing, knowing that behind it you don't have a whole bunch of wires or a structural brace or something is the other thing. So I'm thinking here's my prime candidate. Here's my hole saw, so that gives me an idea of the space I'll need, and it will just fit. It's a tight fit, but it will fit. Looks like I do need to take the steering wheel off to get the drill in to cut this hole, so, so be it. This is a 19mm nut on it. When you're taking steering wheels off, it's important to use a puller rather than just sort of bashing them side to side like that. Keep doing that. 
they'll eventually just come off. You don't want, oh, hang on. So behind here is nice and clear of wires, as well as being obstructed by bracing, you don't want to start cutting into any dash wires. So just make sure you have a good check before you start drilling. For those of you that aren't that familiar with hole saws, they're pretty straightforward. You get a center section like this, and there's a regular drill bit in it. Well, it's almost regular. There's a, maybe can't see in this light, there's a grub screw in here. That grub screw actually goes into a flat section. I've just got a regular drill bit in here that I put on the grinder, just flattened a bit off, popped it in. Then, the hole saw of the diameter I want, or at least close to it, screws on the outside, wind it on so it's completely tight. Then I'm gonna back it off until the holes and those pins line up. Then I turn this bottom collar, which makes the pins come through here, and then it can't rotate anymore. Then pop in the drill, we're good to go. Next thing I do is use a center punch to mark the exact center of the hole on the dashboard. That way the center drill bit here won't wander around. Once the center bit's gone through, then it's a case of just being patient, keeping up firm and even pressure, letting the hole saw do the work. Oops, I cooked my hand drill. The hole drilling didn't go well. This is the cover plate, but once I've cut through there, there's a dash section that I no longer have a center hole for, so the hole saw went a bit everywhere. It's a mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new cover plate. I've got the hole through the dash now, that's great. Make a new cover plate, put that on, put the Y-fish back on, put the taco back in, start smiling again. I'm going to drill this new plate on the bench just by clamping it to a block of wood. We'll drill through it, then we'll install it. It's occurred to me now what's gone wrong with this one a bit and definitely more so with the original one. And that's that the original center drill bit for this hole saw had broken. So I replaced it with a six millimeter drill bit. I put it on the calipers and it was actually a 6.2. Then I just ground a flat side on it so I could put the grub screw onto it, etc. But it's actually not true. It's wobbling inside the hole saw, which is making the hole larger than it should be. So the thing I've learned out of that is don't fake it. Buy the proper center bit for the hole saw, put it in, it'll be fine. So I'll definitely buy a stock of those in the future, but live and learn. If this still ends up being too large, I'm just gonna put the Sikaflex bead around it. Here's the finished product, still got the Y fish off, but I'll screw that back in later. And yeah, it's okay. Actually, I think it's close enough to not need the Sikaflex, which is nice. So we're gonna take this over to the bench and we'll make up some wires for it now, then we'll do the full install. Two wires from the Taco are gonna to go to the forward controls. Now, the balloon comes from the outboard to the forward controls, and then several wires come back out and they're the wires designed to go to your dash instruments. I'm going to take some twin core wire, put two ring terminals on the end for the pins here, and then the other end's actually got bullet connectors. So I'll see what I've got. I actually don't think I've got the same size as there, which is a shame, otherwise we plug in. So I might dodge you something up for now, and then I'll buy some plugs later, but if you can get some correct size male bullet connectors, that's ideal for the other end of the wires. I don't need a huge length of wire because I'm simply going from the right hand side of the dash to the full controls, so it could be pretty short. I should measure it, but I can't be bothered climbing back up into the boat, so I'm going to call it yay. Bit of extra. The instructions say to use at least 18 gauge wire, and this particular wire is a tinned marine wire. These are the lugs I'm going to crimp on. They're about the right size for the post. The colour of the lug dictates the internal diameter and the blue ones seem about right for this wire. Now there's a light pin here and I can't see any reason that I can't just have a little jumper from the ignition power to the light pin so that whenever ignition's on, the light's on. I can't see why not. I'm going to try it first. If there's a problem I'll change it, but that's what I'm thinking. The ground is going to go to the terminal block ground that's under the dash. So I'll put another ring terminal there on that wire, but I'll just make it, you know, once again, yay long, and it can just go into the terminal block nice and easy. This single coil wire is slightly thicker, so I'm going to use the yellow terminal connectors for this one. Okay, all the wires are rigged up now. I'll show you what we've got. This single wire is going to ground. Then I've just got a jumper from the ignition power to the light. I think that should be fine. 
and then we've got the ignition wire and the sender wire coming here. Then I've got the two ends. So this will go to 12 volt ignition power. This will go to the gray wire, which is the signal. I've pushed it through, the wire's just here. Now on the back, I'm just gonna slide this bracket and then the final two nuts go onto those longer posts just to secure it in. So I'll secure it first, then we'll do the wiring. The next step in the instructions is to disconnect the battery before you do the wiring. So I'm just gonna switch my battery switch off. This here now is the negative, just going to a negative terminal block. So that's all taken care of. For the other two wires, I've decided to scale new heights of dodginess and cut off some bullet connectors from an old ignition coil and just soft solder them on. Here they are. I put the brown to red and then the white is to a blue, which will go to a gray. So here they are on the loom, the signal wire going to the gray and then the power, the ignition wire, coming to these red wires out of the forward controls. So I'll switch the battery switch on and we'll give it a whirl. I'm now out on the water to calibrate this taco. I'll quickly show you though, I wasn't getting power out of the forward controls out of the red lead, which should have power when the ignition's on. I know it's not a fuse problem because the trim tilt works, the starter works, or they all run off the same fuse. So at some stage you'll have to pull it apart. But what I've done instead is just run direct power from under the dash. I'll show you that. All I've done here is take a red power lead from the positive bus under the dash. And instead of using this ignition switch wire, which doesn't seem to work at all, I'm going to get power straight. So that's the only change I've got at the moment. I'll sort that out later. I've got my taco unplugged at the moment because I'm going to be using this multimeter for calibration. So this gray wire, which is the signal wire from the stator coil, I'm gonna put the positive lead in. These ends are great on the multimeter because they plug straight into these bullet connectors. And then there's an earth here. So we've got positive to the gray wire, which on the Hondas is the signal wire, and then negative just to an earth. On the multimeter itself, I've got it set to Hertz here. So we're looking for a frequency, and then we'll fire it up and see what value we get. Here you can see we're getting about 35 hertz, so that's our idle speed, 35, 34. I'm actually going to do it as 33 to make the math simple. So we'll do this on paper and I'll show you how you convert the frequency of the signal into RPM. The way we convert a frequency in hertz to RPM is we say 33 hertz is 33 cycles per second. And because RPM's in minutes, we say 33 times 60 to find out how many cycles per minute we're getting. Now the cycles aren't one per rotation in the motor. This is where the poles of the state is really important. Now this is a six pole motor and each pole is a positive and negative. So we're getting three full cycles per rotation of the motor. So if we come down, then we're basically saying 33 hertz times 60 seconds in a minute divided by three full cycles of the stator per rotation, which if we do a shortcut, we just sort of rationalize it and say it's 11 times 60. So 660 RPM is what this motor's doing at 33 Hertz, presuming the six pole figure is correct. What I'm gonna do now is accelerate until the frequency gets to 100. And then I'm gonna plug the taco back in and we'll see what 100 Hertz is being displayed on the taco as. And that'll give us an idea of where we stand with the calibration. I think we can call that close enough. 150 hertz was giving us 1200 RPM on the taco, which is, is way out, it's nowhere near, it's gotta be at least three or something. So we'll do the maths, see what it should be, and then see what we can do to the taco to get the expected result. So if we work through the maths again, we've got 150 hertz, which is 150 cycles a second. So we wanna times it by 60, get 150 per minute. Then we're dividing by three, the number of cycles per rotation. So 9,000 divided by three, which gives us 3,000 RPM. I originally wrote Hertz, but that's wrong. <laughs> so 3,000 RPM is what we should be reading on the TACO when we've got 150 Hertz showing on the multimeter. Now, because that maths is way out, you know, it's basically a factor of two or close to it. I think all I'm gonna do is just change the poles. I don't think the little calibration potentiometer is gonna have enough variation. I imagine that's more in the five to 10% range. So I'm gonna swap it from six poles to three poles. That may be because this has already done the division. So this is saying, look, it's a six pole engine, so it should be three cycles, something along those lines. If you're getting a figure way off what it should be, I think you've gotta suspect the selection of the poles before any final calibration. So what you can see here is I've swapped now from 6p round here to 3p 
which is also listed as 6C. So I'll have to look up what the P and C stand for. I presume it's poles and cycles, but I would have thought it's the other way around, six poles giving you three cycles. So I'll do it a homework number two. Already we can see now that this taco is sitting on about 600 RPM, which is exactly what the math said that we should be at for idle. So I think this is much closer to what we should be. What I'm gonna do now is plug the multimeter back in get it up to 150 hertz, then plug the taco back in and see if we're somewhere near 3000. So here we are close enough to 150. Then I'll unplug the multimeter, put the taco in. You can hopefully see there, we're just above 3000 and we were just above 150 hertz, so. I think we can confidently say this is dialed in now. The figure I'm getting on the taco is matching the number I'm getting from the multimeter. I was dividing by three when I was doing the maths for the multimeter, and that's now set to three pulses and six cycles. I think there's a bit of a terminology issue going on here that probably warrants a bit of further investigation, but at the end of the day, the maths for the multimeter did correlate to this six pole motor divided by two, and eventually when I found a setting on the taco that gave me the correct result, it gives me something I can be confident in. Obviously, when you install this, if you go by the recommended setting and it's wrong by a factor of two or two thirds or something, then just change that setting till you get the right result. Not all multimeters have a frequency setting on them, so you may need to borrow one or whatever to do that particular test. I do think it's worth having when you first install it though, because I think it's a really great way of seeing what's coming out of the outboard and how that number is being represented on the dial of the taco. All right, well that wraps this video up. I hope it helps you if you're looking to install a taco like this in your boat. It's not really rocket science, but it can just take a little bit of configuring to get it right for your outboard. All right, well thanks for watching. Next week we'll probably get onto that video about life jacket sort of maintenance. And also if you're coming to the meetup, I'll see you there in person. All right, well take care, see you soon, bye.